Both Janine and I grew very concerned about certain things. It's going to be a big, big, big trip for us. It's going to be huge. We're going to be going to other really, really cool spots in Snowdonia that we've never been to before. I'm not used to this. Oh this is Janine's extreme sport of the day. It is the only one of its kind in the whole country. I think it's the first time that I've been over 100 miles an hour without being in a vehicle. But hopefully I'll hear some screams. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple who are attempting, despite all the challenges, to live, travel and vlog full-time in our converted removals truck camper van conversion in the UK. For the past six months, we've been doing an almost full circular coastal route of mainland Britain. And after a recent diversion to Turkey on a surprise birthday trip from Liam, we are now back in Britain and headed to North Wales to the incredible Snowdonia region. In this video, things are going to get extreme and we'll be crossing off more stuff off our our ever growing bucket list whilst visiting some stunning mountain scenery along the way. Things are going to get wild, so please subscribe to the channel as our van life adventures continue in Morgan, our removals truck camper van. Welcome back to the channel. We are back in Morgan, our camper van, and we are back in the UK. We left you last time in Istanbul, in Turkey. We are now back in the UK and we're heading off to our next destination, our next big adventure. I'm going to let you know more about that in just a minute. But first, based on our European trip that we've just had, We've got some concerns and some worries that we wanted to share with you and I'm going to get through to that in a second but I'm going to let you know first what's happened since Istanbul up to now. So yeah, as you know we were in Turkey for Janine's 40th birthday, it was a surprise birthday where we went to Cappadocia and went on the hot air balloons there. It's been on Janine's bucket list for a very long time and we managed to do it. Plus, we got to spend some time in Istanbul, which is an incredible city. That's where we left you last time. From there, we actually flew to Spain for my cousin's wedding. It was a bit of a last minute thing. We didn't know whether we'd be able to go or not. But in the end, we decided to go. And it cost quite a lot of money, for the flights did, to go from Istanbul to Spain. We don't know why. We had to make a big decision whether to do it or not, but we decided to do it in the end. And we're really glad that we did. She got married in Andalusia, just north of Malaga in Spain, in the mountains and it was an incredible wedding. So what we did was we flew to Malaga, we hired a scooter, a 50cc scooter, because not only am I terrified about driving on the right hand side of the road, but I'm just, I'm more terrified about driving on the right hand side of the road in a left hand side, left hand drive vehicle, which is what it would have been. Um, so I'm not quite ready there, there, there yet. So we got, we hired a scooter. The scooter unfortunately wasn't powerful enough for me and Janine and our luggage. So Janine ended up having to get off it quite a lot, especially up some of those Spanish mountains. Either way, the scooter was, it, it was a good decision because we were, it made us relax a little bit more. Uh, we didn't have to worry about hiring a car and the right hand side of the road and all that sort of business. When my cousin got married, it was an incredible event. Really, really good. It took place in this sort of villa out in the sticks, surrounded by eucalyptus trees, in the mountains, by a river. It was insane, it was so good, we're so pleased that we went. What ended up happening was we ended up staying in a and b on a last minute cancellation just round the corner from the venue. This is right in the middle of nowhere, uh, we got very lucky with this cancellation and we ended up to book three nights around the wedding. It ended up being so good, the place where we stayed, it was like, it was called La Fuente Os b and b it was, it was like a jungle, it was like a and b in a jungle. It had banana trees and avocado trees and mango trees. It had a freshwater pool. It was just beautiful, it was like tropical. It was so nice. It was so nice that we ended up staying for a whole week. We took the time to really relax and reflect on what we're doing in life. And in all honesty, it was, it was nice just to do nothing for a bit. We went hiking a bit, and, but we did a lot of relaxing. So we've just gone back from Malaga. It was a two and a half hour flight, got to the airport, picked up Morgan. It's very strange to see Morgan again after two, over two weeks. And now we're back in Morgan and we are heading to our next place, our next big adventure. So anyway, the time that we spent in Europe was very, very eye-opening. As you know, our plan has been to do the British summer and then go into Europe for the first time in Morgan, our camper van. But whilst we were over in Europe, both Janine and I grew very concerned about certain things, about actually moving to Europe. We, and we're gonna see it as a big trip. We're not doing it as a sort of a holiday anymore. When we take Morgan over there, we're gonna be there for a while. So we're taking it very, very seriously. When we were in Istanbul, we both said to each other, there's not a chance in hell that we would drive Morgan into Istanbul city. The traffic was too crazy and the roads were too tight. They were too narrow. And it's actually probably almost impossible 
down some of those roads in Istanbul. So Istanbul was a write-off. We got to Spain and we experienced some of the th same things in Spain as well. Narrow streets, really steep streets. Basically, what we surmised from it, from just those two places, was there might be some places that were restricted to drive to in Morgan, our camper van. And it started, it got us thinking, it got us a little bit concerned. So now we've come to realize that we're gonna need, it, obviously we've got Morgan, He's big. He's not as big as some motorhomes, actually. A lot of the motorhomes that we come across are bigger, taller. I'm sorry, not taller. They're longer. We're about. We're just a little bit taller than most motorhomes. Um, so, I know that people go to Europe in motorhomes. I know that I, I could do with speaking to them. If you've been to Europe in a motorhome, um, in a large motorhome, I'd be interested. We'd be interested to hear your advice about taking Morgan over there. Maybe we need to take another form of transport with us as well, like a bike or something. Even a, a moped or a scooter, we love mopeds and scooters. Um, that could be a possibility, but we're going to need something because there's going to be places that Morgan can't go to. So if anyone's got any advice on driving a large vehicle to Europe, we really need to know because we are going to be heading there in less than a month's time. It's going to be a big, big, big trip for us. It's going to be huge. Um, any advice that you guys can give us, we're preparing Morgan to go to Europe will be greatly appreciated because we've never taken a camper van over there before. So back to now, we are super happy to be back in the UK. It's fairly warm, it's fairly mild. It's getting dark now. And we have decided to go back to Wales to pick up where we left off before we went away for Janine's 40th birthday. So we are heading towards Snowdonia. We're heading there now. We've got another two hours and 45 minutes before we arrive. Hopefully we'll arrive before midnight. Also, we're gonna try and find a park up and we've got some exciting things planned. We're really looking forward to it. We're gonna fill you in. We're right now, we're gonna finish off this journey and try and find a park up in Clumberis, which is near Mount Snowdon. Wish us luck. gosh we've just arrived um, and it feels really really odd to be wild camping again um, it's definitely something that I'm gonna have to get back in the swing of because um, yeah I mean there's no one in this car park but I feel really like I've got a whisper <laughs> um, anyway I'm gonna set up for tomorrow and grab an early night although it's quite late now so yeah we're just gonna go to bed and get ready for tomorrow Jesse was born on a winter's night in the middle of the storm. The road was blocked, so Jesse was born in this old house. Raised on love in those sunny years when there was magic in oh, the awesome. world. Laughter traveled well across those hardwood floors. God knows we didn't have. Good morning everyone. Today we have woken up in this beautiful car park and I say it's a beautiful car park because it is surrounded by mountains and it's got a gorgeous garden right at the back of it um, and it feels quite empty and peaceful as well. So yeah we stayed here last night we actually ducked into this park up because it started raining it was getting really dark and we were getting tired um, so we didn't actually make where we were going to go to. We didn't make it there. Um, we are heading to Mount Snowdon. We're going to climb Mount Snowdon today, and uh, that's where we were trying. We were trying to get as close as possible to Mount Snowdon, but we're about half an hour away now. Um, so that's where we're going today. Um, it was really peaceful here last night. We had a great night's sleep, and now we're going to do the half an hour journey to Snowdon. So let's go. Good morning. So yeah, we're on our way to climb Wales, Wales's largest mountain. Um, it's gonna be a really, really, really good climb today. We're both very excited about it. Janine's a little bit nervous as she always is when she climbs a mountain, um, but also, just to blow the cobwebs out, you know, we've just come back from holiday from Turkey and Spain, and um, this is going to be really, really, really needed. In this video, we are going to be going not only to Wales's largest mountain, 
We're going to be going to other really, really cool spots of Snowdonia that we've never been to before. So off we went. First up on our Snowdonia trip, we have the challenge of climbing Wales's largest mountain. We drive along the roads on this mild, sunny morning, admiring the landscape in front of us. We aimed for the car park at the beginning of the hiking trail. However, it was full, so we travelled further down the road and found a parking spot. OK, so we are here. We've parked up on the side of the road and there's a bus stop actually opposite. The guy at the tourist information centre, which we've just popped into, um, said to park down here. Bus up. We haven't pre-booked our parking for the main car park, so that's what you do if you don't um, pre-book. Anyway, we're about to catch the bus and head up to the start point of this hike. It is a beautiful day today. The sky is blue. It's a little bit breezy. I'm thinking it's going to be really quite breezy at the top. So I'm bringing a spare jumper for when I get to the top. I'm wearing really light clothes today to help me get up there because I need as much help as possible. So anyway, Liam is back now and we're going to go to the start point. First stop, we're going to catch a bus. So there's uh, two different tracks, main tracks going over. There's the pig and the miners. The pig is the one which starts off a bit more sort of garish and undulating and up and down and the miners start off a bit lower, a bit flatter, a bit easier and then it gets steep at the end so you've got a bit of a more of a climb at the end of it. I think we're going to go up the, mi the pig track and then come back down the miners because it'd be a bit easier on the old um, knees on the way down because we don't have walking sticks which we always say we're going to do uh, but we never get them. We'll do pig first and come down the miners and all, life will be good. We set off on a four to six hour hike up Wales's largest mountain with an elevation of 1,085 metres above sea level. In the end, we chose the miners route up to the summit, which would have lake views, a steadier incline at the start, but a steeper incline later on. Let's see if it was the right choice or not. weather's holding off on us it's a really nice day and we just found some chocolate in the bag as well which is just such a nice find it's like finding a fiver in your pocket oh actually inflation it's like finding a teller in your pocket um, so we'll enjoy that when we get to the top something to look forward to and uh, we'll keep you posted hey sweetie how are you feeling <laughs> i'm not used to this We continued our hike up towards the summit. The wind was getting stronger and my legs heavier. We passed views of the Welsh coast, spotting areas we have visited previously, then on to complete our challenge. We're almost there. That's the summit. I'm gonna start for it. It's almost finished. And that there is the, we believe, is the highest visitor centre in the whole of Britain or the UK. Which is quite impressive, but it's closed today. It's also a cafe sandwiches and coffee and all that sort of business anyway that's the summit I'm so happy that it's over and that we can just go downhill now. Um, yeah, how, how do you feel? I feel pretty brilliant. <laughs> and, and we're looking over now, Wales, the whole of our trip, uh, trip of Wales so far, the whole coast, we're looking at it and we can recognise places. Port Merion's just down in front of it, uh, Port Maddock, uh, Black Rock Sands, it's 
all just in front of us and we've been there and we've van life there and we've camped there and it's just awesome the views of get a clear day up on Snowdon it's pretty damn special I reckon. Now to go back down this is where you get the wobbly leg scenario. Syndrome. It's the wobbly leg syndrome. Wobbly, wobbly leg syndrome. <laughs> that anyway. Finally making it to the top in good time we made our way down. We mistakenly took the wrong route back adding extra time onto our hike. We took four hours in all and by the time we got to the bottom we were both exhausted. We found the closest cafe, grabbed a coffee, ate crisps and chocolate then headed back to the van to go and eat something hopefully more substantial. Thank you. Oh my god. Literally any kind of walking now is a struggle. Oh. <sighs> I could never settle down too far away from my hometown. Right, we're on the Penny Pass and we are finished with hiking for the day, thank God. I think that ended up being sort of like six hours straight hiking up and down mountains. It was it was crazy, but good, we feel really good for it. Now what we've got to do is find a park up for the evening um, and we're in the middle of the mountains. It might not be the easiest thing in the world, but we're going to have a look anyway. There, there are some laybys knocking about, but a lot of the laybys say uh, no overnight parking. So it might not be the best to do it down here, but we're heading to somewhere called Betsy Coed or near Betsy Coed and hoping that there's going to be something around there. We left on our journey to find our park up. With food on the brain, we spoke on the journey about a dish we have been craving for such a long time and the feasibility of making it now for an after trek meal. We continued to our park up, which turned out to be absolutely amazing, right in the heart of a forest. <gasps> oh wow, check out this park up. It's absolutely gorgeous. We've got, we're right in the forest. We've got this gorgeous view to the right of us and the same view, but higher up to the left and yeah it's so so gorgeous and peaceful there's another van here um, but apart from that it's just us and we are feeling absolutely exhausted and this is just so perfect for the mood that we're both in now so we're just gonna hop in the back freshen up um, have some showers and stuff and make dinner because I'm so hungry <laughs> um, and so is Liam and we're both really tired so yeah this is just such a nice park up i'm really pleased with this oh, oh. <laughs> using our new fancy side door well the side door's always been there but the fancy step ah. <laughs> the fancy step hasn't it'll never ever grow old ever. <laughs> I don't think I can make it up. Oh. <laughs> so what's the what's on the menu tonight then? Tonight, Matthew, I'm gonna be cooking you a jacket potato. <gasps> That's actually one of my favourite meals. We've been Janine and I in Turkey eating hummus and aubergine every night. Um were just talking about how much we want a jack of potato cheese and with cheese and beans and I'm going to make a kick-ass jack of potato cheese and beans now. Oven's on, the only thing is it's going to take about two hours to do <laughs> and we're both starving. <laughs> so um, so it's going to take, it's going to, it's going to test us, but it'll be well worth it. Oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> that's good. Only two hours to wait until we eat, it's all right. <laughs> Good thinking, Liam. Good thinking. It'll be so worth it when we're eating it, but you know, we're gonna have to, well, let's have a cup of tea. That'll, that'll tide us over. <laughs> the potatoes are done. They're done. Um, and yeah, just gotta wait for the beans to heat up. We finally ate our jacket potatoes and chilled out for the evening in the middle of the forest. Good 
Good morning everyone. Today we have woken up in the middle of a forest and it is so idyllic and beautiful. There was a little bit of a storm that went over but we had just cooked the jacket potatoes and we were eating, the storm came over and by the time we packed up it had gone. So we were actually going to leave because we didn't know how fierce that storm was going to be and being in the middle of a forest um, it could have been quite dodgy but luckily it went. So we got to stay here overnight and I'm so pleased because waking up this morning and just seeing this all around us is definitely what I need today. <laughs> okay, so we are leaving now and I'm so excited. Um, we're gonna hop in the front and leave once Liam's sorted out the floor. You done yet? What, picking up all the pine needles off the floor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like bloody, it's like boxing day. <laughs> We picked up the pine needles from the floor and headed off quickly as we had a very exciting day ahead. Okay, cool. Where we're heading now is literally just around the corner from the park up that we was at, uh, near a town called Betsy Coed. And uh, where we're going to it, Janine's going on it. Uh, this is Janine's extreme sport of the day. Is the only one of its kind in the whole country, apparently. Um, I did, we didn't know it existed until we arrived here. And um, Janine actually said just the other day, she saw a YouTuber doing it in another country and said, I really want to do that. So off we go, we're going to go and do it. Janine's going to fill you in when we get there and show you what it's like, but it should be really interesting. And I'm a little bit envious to one of you, but we're both going to just, we're both doing an extreme sport each today. We're splitting off to save money. And so let's see, here we go. This is us. Okay, so we're here and it isn't this thing behind me. I don't think anyway, unless Liam's put me into a surprise thing that I definitely don't want to do. Um, but the thing that I am doing is not actually as extreme as Liam's making out, but it sounds so much fun and I'm really excited. It is the UK's only forest roller coaster. So I'm going to show you that now. We grabbed a quick veggie sausage sandwich and a coffee on the way, then headed up to check in and go on my very first forest roller coaster. It's a toboggan style coaster which gets up to 25 miles per hour in speed. You control the brakes by pulling up on the handlebar. It costs 28 pounds and you get three rides. That was so funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I would definitely recommend this. I absolutely smashed it down that last bit. I went so fast and it goes really steep as well. I just tried my hardest not to put the brakes on. I did a couple of times, but that last time was just, yeah, I just came flying through. It was really, really fun. I think you need three goes just to sort of get your confidence. The first go, in, in comparison to the third go, I went really slow. But yeah, I would definitely recommend this to anyone come in in this area. It's really fun. After all my fun, we went back to the van to go to our next stop. Okay, so we're just leaving. Janine's just had a load of fun without me, but I'm very, very pleased for her. However, next time we see one of those things, I'm having a go as well, because it looks so much fun. We are spending the whole day around the Betsy Coed area, which is where we slept last night, which is where this adventure sport was. We're now going to somewhere else in Betsy Coed. To, to, it's a waterfall that we've got to, we suppose that we have to check out whilst we're here. And then, we're doing one last extreme thing before we leave. So off we go to this waterfall. It's called Sparrow Falls Waterfall. We made our way to the beautiful Swallow Falls, which is up there as one of the nicest waterfalls we have seen. It cost two pounds to enter and we spent some time admiring how big and unique looking it was. We headed back to the van. Okay, so we're back at the van. Um, those waterfalls were really, really pretty and yeah they were just really nice but we didn't stay there for long because Liam has a very important appointment and we are on our way there now. Yeah so we did recently did an Instagram poll on our Instagram page um, and I asked people if they think I should do this next thing that uh, I'm about to do. Uh, almost 100% of people, hundreds of people voted said that they would like to see me do it um, so it's a bit of a no-brainer so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We are off now to go and do one of the most um, extremist non-mountain related um, sports in Snowdonia. I'm about to go and do the world's fastest zip line 
and Europe's longest zip line. Wish me luck, that's where we're going now. We made a 45 minute drive to where we thought was the correct direction. So I've really messed up here. Um, I've gone to completely the wrong place. Zip World run this um, one that I'm going to and there's obviously numerous zip lines that are all incredible across Snowdonia. I headed to the one that was in a, uh, a slate quarry, which is what this, this is, and apparently there's two. So I'm going to one that's called Velocity 2, which is the fastest, the longest and all the rest of it. Um, but it's a 45 minute drive away and you get a time slot and it's expensive. And we're low on fuel. <laughs> So it's all going wrong, but uh, Janine's hope gonna have to call up and just let them know that we've we messed up. I made the phone call and luckily managed to book into the very last slot of the day, arriving just in the nick of time if we get a move on. But time was against us. We parked up and rushed in. See you on the flip side. Yeah. We're going through here, we're gonna go and get kitted up and that's it, me gone for the next two hours. That's crazy. Considering it's the fastest zip line in the world, you'd think it would be a bit quicker than that. <laughs> I'll see you later. See ya, good luck. Okay, so I'm all kitted up. Uh, helmet with the, the, I've got a camera that's gonna go on it. Nice. Um, this is the harness, I've got my phone in here, which is good. I've done my shoelaces up nice and tight um, for the first time ever. And uh, apparently the reason why it's taking so long is because we've got two zip lines to do. So we've got this one here, which I guess is like a tester one. Um, then they take us in a truck for 15 minutes up to the top of that thing, up there, taking the, this big lorry, uh, 15 minutes to the top of that thing. And then we come down and it takes no time at all just to fly to the bottom. The fastest, that's the fastest one in the world. So that's what we're doing. So I'll just give you an update. But, no. oh, I'm gonna go down. Sorry. Okay. I relaxed in the cafe with a coffee whilst Liam went on his extreme adventure. That's the first one done anyway. That's the short one done. We're about to go and do the big one now. <laughs> face downwards when you're going down it so you can't really look up I tried to look forward but it, it sort of the way you position it really hurts your neck if you do that so you're sort of facing downwards so you're unaware of all of the, the gear that you got on and all the mechanisms it's just feel it really does feel like you're flying quite a long way up really good views up here down there spoke to the instructors here and got some stats. So we're about as high as the Empire State Building right now. The zip line is uh, just over a mile long and the speed that we're gonna be going at today because the wind's behind us is over 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I think it's the first time that I've been over 100 miles an hour without being in a vehicle of some sort. Um, so yeah, there's, there's it's quite, um, quite something. Um, I wouldn't say I'm nervous, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sort of that, I'm, you know, a little bit mixed fixed side and a little bit of nerd. Right, so I've just been sat here watching some people come down. I've just had a phone call from Liam. He is up next. Um, so I'm, and it's just started raining, oh my God. So I'm gonna really try and capture him. They come down quite quick and they're sort of invisible for the first part because of the uh, mountain in the background so you can't really see them but as soon as they get right in front of me that's when I can see them um, but hopefully I'll hear some screams <laughs> and things like that so I know that they're coming <laughs> There's no explanation for that really, apart from the, the look of my face coming down. But that, look how high up that was. Right there. I, I saw, I've got to admit, I saw a video not so long ago of a guy who did it and he got stuck. And he came down, didn't quite make it, 
and then went flying back up again and he was stuck up there for ages and i think because he had a gopro in his hand and you're not allowed to bring gopros up here and it, the the aerodynamics slowed him down anyway not only was it going ridiculously fast but i was worried it was going to get stuck as well so um oh well that was an experience that was brilliant i guess i don't need my goggles anymore Woo. Hey. <laughs> well done. All done. All good. All good. Was it fun? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was really good. Um, 100 miles an hour. Can't, can't complain, can you? No, it's so fast. I missed you. Oh, uh, no, did you? Yeah. You had one job to do. <laughs> How was your cup of tea or coffee? The coffee was nice, but. Uh, I missed you because you said I'm up. I know. I, I tried to call you. You know, I tried to call you back. I was there thinking Janine's going to think it's not. It's not these ones. It's the ones after these ones. Yeah. And I was trying to call you back, but there was two. They were, they were strapping me up, so I had the phone uh, out. I thought, but Janine, I thought if Janine had some sense, she'll film everything. Well, I actually did. Good. I did. I did. Because <laughs> I have got lots of sense. <laughs> What's in the cafe? Is it good? Same menu as the other one. Oh, is it so? Sausage sandwiches. <laughs> potato, <laughs> potato sandwiches. Getting Liam back safe and sound, we drank a tea before heading off to find our park up for the evening. This time we headed to a place called Bangor and it costs £5 to park here overnight. It has some local toilets which is handy and views of the beautiful island of Anglesey. We were both feeling hungry so stepped in the van for some dinner. So what's on the menu tonight? I'm making you a sausage and jackfruit jambalaya. Wow. Yeah. Jackfruit, are you going to be able to do jackfruit well? It's not our favourite, is it? It's a dodgy thing to make. We need a fish. We need a fish substitute, and I'm going to go. I'm going with um, jackfruit for this one. I think it will be okay, but we'll, 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 only time will tell. Um, I'm going to put everything into it and make sure it's all good. So don't worry. I'm sure it'll be fine. Looking good, Liam. Jambalaya, <laughs> jambalaya. Jackfruit and um, sausage jambalaya. It's supposed to be peppery with some harissa and stuff. It's, it's, I've had a little taste, it's awesome. It's so nice. The only thing I would add to it, which we haven't got, is a little bit of lemon juice, but still, I'm very happy with that. It looks really good. Can yeah. I try some? Of course you can. Nice. Take a little bit. Mm. Oh, it's blooming hot, but that's really good. So nice. Fiery, right? Spicy as well, and lots and lots of flavour. It's lovely. Right, let's serve up like like human beings, mm. hey? <laughs> we sat and ate our delicious sausage and jackfruit jambalaya, overlooking the Menai Strait and on to Anglesey, where we'll be heading soon. These may be our last few weeks in Britain for a long time, so we are soaking it up and really enjoying watching the seasons change. We hope everyone who follows this channel had an incredible summer and you're looking forward to the crunchy leaves season as much as we are. We'd like to thank you for subscribing if you like the videos and we look forward to seeing you next time as we have some big news for you about our future plans. See you next time. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for 